Hey, what's going on there guys and gals? Welcome back to another episode. This is the Kawasaki ZH2, as you all know and love. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss what to do when you get involved in a crash. This is gonna be a tough one. Let's get into it. Yeah, guys and gals, this is a rider's worst nightmare, this topic. What to do when you get in a crash. And we're going to come at this video from as many different angles as possible, depending on the situation. So I'm going to try and think of as many situations as I possibly can and try and give you guidance or solutions because you'd be surprised how many people don't know what to do in this kind of situation. So we'll get on the bike, we'll go for a ride. And yeah, let's see if we can figure this one out. Yeah, we've reached the time of year now where <laughs> it is always wet in the UK. Always wet, even if even when it's dry, it's wet. <laughs> yeah, bit of a pain, but unfortunately, that's just how it is this time of year. Not a lot you can do about it. So yeah, getting in a crash. Not the best experience in the world, but. It's one of those things that will probably happen to each and every rider at some point in their careers. It may even happen more than once, so you just never know. So it's it's certainly one of those things that you want to be prepared for, even though you don't want it to happen, you know? And that's the biggest problem with motorcycle crashes. A lot of the time you don't know where they came from. <laughs> They just kind of happen out the blue, and then you gotta you gotta somehow deal with it. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people don't know what to do when it comes to accidents, collisions. They just don't know what to do. And I'll give you I'll give you a little story that happened to me once earlier on in my riding career, where a driver was on the opposite side of the road. So as you can see these cars are now and I was going the opposite direction and they were going to turn right they're going to turn right into uh, I think it was like a rugby club and they started indicating and they started turning in towards the uh, towards the rugby club whilst I was on approach and my reaction was to put the brakes on as hard as possible because you guys know you don't leave these kinds of things to chance so you want to try and brake as hard as possible, make sure that you stop well before you get anywhere close to whatever this stupid person is, is trying to do. But anyway, they made a mistake and they came out into the road ever so slightly. I, th I think they, their front wheel was probably over, over the line on my side of the road. And so I reacted the way I did and the bike I was riding dropped this was one of my old Chinese 125 bikes. It dropped and I put my hands up afterwards and I said, what are you doing? Because what are they doing? What, are they just testing me? Are they, you know, in a, in a, in a sense, brake checking me? It was one of those absolutely ridiculous situations where clearly the driver was not concentrating on what the hell they were doing, came out into my, into my lane and I was expecting them to continue going. I wasn't expecting them to stop. They ended up stopping, but by that point, I'd already reacted and the bike was already on the floor. So, yeah, one of those horrible situations where there's no damage, no nothing to anyone's, well, there wasn't any damage to the driver's car, of course, because the bike dropped to the ground and there you go, I was, I was on my ass. So, Anyway, I didn't know what to do in that situation and what ended up happening was, was there was a queue of people backing up uh, on either side of the road and we ended up moving the bike, picking up the bike up, moving it off the road and the car moved off the road and we discussed this further but I had no idea what to do. I was probably only 17 at the time. So this is so over 10 years ago now and 
yeah, it, nothing came of it. Nothing came of it whatsoever. When I should have been able to claim on the insurance, I should have been able to say, look, this person did something stupid, I want to get my bike fixed. And in the end, my handlebars were a bit wonky because the bike landed on the handlebars. So, yeah, I, I can't remember what, what I did. I think I just left the handlebars as they were. Um, I think, I can't remember. Maybe I got them fixed, I can't remember. But yeah, so even just one of those little city situations and you, you leave yourself thinking, all right, well, what the hell do I do now? And that's, that's basically the process that we're gonna, that we're gonna discuss. Like I said, of course, this is going to depend on the situation, but for the most part, if you are in a low side or if you get involved in some kind of crash where you're able to move and you know you haven't hit the ground hard or you haven't hit anything hard for that matter, you know, you can kind of take control of the situation. And that's what you want to do. If you can, if you're able, you want to take full control of the situation. You want to dictate to everyone exactly what's going to happen. And if you are able to dictate the situation, you want to keep everything exactly where it is. You don't want to move anything. Don't move any cars, don't move your bike, don't move anything. As soon as the incident has happened, you want to, if you can get up, get up, turn the bike off, if you feel okay that is, turn the bike off, leave everything exactly where it is, tell the driver to stay exactly where they are, tell them not to move the, their car anywhere. Or a bike, if it's another bike involved, tell them not to move the bike anywhere. Immediately, get your phone out, start taking pictures. Don't worry about what the, other, what the driver's doing, or the other person that's involved, don't worry about what they're doing. You just get your phone out straight away, start taking pictures as, as it is. Exactly as it is. And if there's damage to your bike, take pictures of that. If there's damage to the other vehicle, take pictures of that as well. Try and get as many pictures as possible. And then, once you finish doing that, still try and keep everything exactly the way it is if, if traffic is backing up you have to tell them to turn around if you're on a single lane track or something like that you have to tell them to go a different way simple as that unfortunately and then with your phone you want to take a video keep your phone out take a video and have a conversation with the other person that's involved all right So you want to ask them questions like, what were they doing, what speed were they going, and what their intention was, what did they intend to do. And if you can get any kind of explanation as to what they were doing, it prob it's probably going to lay them at fault. And if you've got significant damage to your bike, well, their insurance company will end up paying for it. So it's really important that you get as much information as you possibly can with the incident. Once you've got all the pictures, once you've got a video talking to the other person involved, you can turn everything off or you can stop the video, stop the recording, pick up the bike and then put it somewhere, somewhere else. Now that's in a situation where you are okay, you know? Where you've been involved in just a low side and you can walk away from it. So you get the opportunity to take control of the situation. Now, if there is a situation where you are not able to take control, so if you've been involved in a high side or you've hit the ground really hard or you've hit something really hard or you're unconscious or something like that and you have no control of the situation whatsoever, then this is a message that goes out to the people that are okay. If you are a bystander, if you are the other person involved in the crash, this is what you need to do. You need to take control of the situation and you, on behalf of the victim, take pictures and videos of the incident, of what's happened. That's what you need to do. Now I know that there are people out there that are gonna hit and run. They're gonna run from the situation. I have seen that so many times where people run away from a problem that they've caused. And it is a massive problem. 
It's illegal. Guys, if you don't know, it is illegal. If someone says to the police that you were involved in a hit and run, you will be sent to prison. That's how illegal it is. So you are not allowed to do that, even though that is what people do. But look, guys and girls, if you are the person at fault, wait, there's oil on the ground. Okay, let's take this easy for a second here. Excuse me, guys and girls, I will be... <laughs> Hold the line, corner. I'll back with you in just a sec. Right, we're out of that mass. Okay. So, yes, please, if you are the person that is responsible for whatever it was, take responsibility. Please, be the bigger person, admit fault, and try to fix it. The best way you can fix the situation is by helping the, the victim, by helping the person that was not at fault, the person that had nothing to do with whatever it was they were doing. Right, and how can you tell, guys and girls, how can you tell if you were at fault or not? The easiest way to tell is that if you, if your actions cause someone else to harshly move move their vehicle in an alternative direction to the direction they were naturally going if you force their hand to do something then you are probably at fault if you force the other person to do something that they wouldn't normally have had to do then it was probably your fault okay like in this in the situation that i explained earlier about you know the person that came into my lane from the opposite side of the road they were turning into to uh well yeah to some estate of some kind they were turning in and they forced me to react right i don't want to hear this this rubbish oh they they were committed they were committed okay right so that means then that if i am committed to doing something stupid then that puts me in the right does it that means i'm okay to go ahead and do it even though i have so-called committed to doing whatever it is i'm going to do which is affecting either people in front of me or people behind me no that is absolute rubbish if you are causing someone else to move drastically from their natural direction then you are at fault okay it is as straightforward as that guys and gals whether it is giving way whatever the situation is if you if you understand that there's someone that's being affected by your actions whether it's in front of you or behind you you are at fault okay anyway right ran over so do what you can all right i mean of, of course i mean I, we should probably go back a few steps here and just go through the exact same steps as before so if you are a responsible person and you realize that a rider is on the floor not moving the very first thing you need to do is call an ambulance call the police they can start they can block off the road call an ambulance as well the police the um, the dispatcher might even call an ambulance for you as well whilst you're on the phone to them so do that first the very first thing you should do as you are doing that walk over to the person the person that's on the floor and try and do some basic checks make sure they're breathing don't move them don't move whatever you do don't move them don't move them but check for signs of life yeah so check for a heartbeat check for a pulse check to make sure they're breathing now of course in a helmet that is extremely difficult to do because uh, you can't take the helmet off you're not allowed to do that but what you can do is you can lift up the the uh, the visor the visor that's in front of the helmet and stick the back of your hand or the back of your fingers underneath their nose as close to the well not 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 that close to their nose you don't want to smother them but you want to get it underneath their nose and see if you can feel any breath if you can feel breath they're still breathing great you're doing you're doing okay right at that point any instructions that the police give you follow those instructions and if they put you through to a uh, a medical dispatcher follow any instructions that they have as well for you but yeah don't move them whatever you do don't move them right once the police have arrived once the ambulances have arrived and they're taking care of the rider that is when you have to take the opportunity to take pictures of the incident take pictures of everything that's happened take a video if you like as well explain from your point of view what had happened now i understand that a point of view is a point of view but try and explain exactly what 
what happened from your point of view uh, as best as you possibly can and I suppose if you are able try and explain it from the other person's point of view as well in that situation the vehicles involved don't really matter it's the life that's involved that matters and I'm sure a rider will respect you for or will appreciate your efforts in trying to make sure that they're okay and I like to think that most people are like that that you know just basic <laughs> uh, you know human instinct is to make sure someone else is okay but you, you never know in this day and age guys and gals unfortunately you, you can't guarantee that's what's going to happen but yeah if you are okay take control of the situation straight away you dictate exactly what it is that you want the other person to do right guys and gals one last bit for you one last tip for you when it comes to crashes and that is what if you're involved in some kind of crash that isn't involving anybody it's your own fault what do you do then all right well again you have to kind of take the same approach where you f***ed up or excuse me you messed up and again if the bike is in a worse you know in a pretty bad shape then again the insurance company is going to want to see all the damage and stuff like that so you're going to want to take pictures and things like that of the scene and if there was an oil slick on the road take pictures of that if there was gravel on the road take pictures of that you, you never know um, I mean the insurance company obviously has to pay out but they might be able to claim it back off the local council or something I don't know you never know but take take pictures of everything that might have caused the crash to begin with and uh, yeah so again you, you're kind of responsible there to make sure that you get all the evidence you possibly can and if you do need medical attention then yeah you need to somehow try and get your phone out and try and contact whoever you can really to give give you a hand all right and to protect yourselves if you are in a situation like that and you cannot help yourself well you can get a smartwatch and a smartwatch will track your gps location and obviously you can send that gps tracking information to your loved ones your relatives i have a uh what, what, what they call it's like an sos on my smartwatch where if i press a certain button i think it's five times then it sends out an sos it sends out a text message to to any contacts that i want and it also sends the gps information but yeah so have a gps and uh, yeah if, if you are able to send that information off to relatives and things like that so they know where you are then that of course will go a long way but in that situation yeah it's, it's very very difficult when you're on your own and you are heavily reliant on other people just you know ha to, to happen by and to see what what's going on but i mean guys guys and girls if any of you are bystanders or you're a witness to something that's happened then yeah you take take the steps that i mentioned earlier try and help this person out take pictures and what have you just to help them you know so they know exactly what's exactly what's happened themselves anyway guys and girls i'm gonna leave that video here i'm sure there are bits and pieces that i've not covered but these are just from my own experiences and what it is that you should do if you ever get into a situation like I did. So hopefully it's given you a bit of guidance as to what you should do in that given situation. And just, I just seriously hope that if you are involved in something like that, that you are able to take control of the situation, you're able to, you know, kind of be the master of your own fate, I suppose. And, sort it out of the way how you want to sort it out don't let someone else do it because at the end of the day it's it's going to be your own insurance money that's going to be at play so yeah you never know what's going to happen guys and girls but stay safe out there yeah have fun but stay safe 
because all this can happen in just a split second and yeah you're left wondering what the hell happened so but it's it's after it's happened is what counts what you do in that situation afterwards is what counts anyway guys and girls thank you ever so much for watching i hope you found this episode informative and yeah unfortunately if this is a retrospective kind of thing where you've already been involved in in a crash recently i, I do apologize uh you know i i hope you're all okay and and it all got sorted out for you in the end but yeah and let us know in the comment section below situations that you've been in before i'd love to hear your thoughts on. i'd love to hear what what happened and you know whether or not you're okay but yeah give us a like give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel as always guys and gals leave us a comment about what you think and we'll catch you all in the next video have a good one